In the previous video, we were introduced to the concept of derived units of measurement, that is, units that are derived from one or more of the seven base SI units. In this video, we're going to look in more detail at four of the most important derived units used in chemistry. We saw this table in the previous video, showing derived units for a whole range of physical parameters, including some you may have familiarity with, such as area, volume, and speed or velocity, and others you may be less familiar with, such as pressure, which has the pascal as its unit, energy, which has the joule as its unit, and power, which has the watt as its unit. All of these derived units are based on combinations of one or more of the seven base SI units, one or more of the meter, kilogram, second, kelvin, mole, ampere, or candela. Perhaps the simplest example of a derived unit is the SI unit for area, which is derived from the SI unit for length and has the units of meters squared or square meters. We can see how these units are derived by looking at the area of this rectangle, which has a length of 17.764 meters and a width of 11.1 .1 meters. We can easily calculate or derive the area of the rectangle by multiplying these two values together. But in doing so, we need to take into account both parts of the physical measurements, that is both the magnitude and the unit. The magnitude of the area of the rectangle is easily determined by multiplying the two numeric values using a calculator. 17.764 times 11.1 .1 equals 197.1804. The units must be treated in the same way. By multiplying meters times meters, we get meters squared as the unit. And this is something to remember. Whatever mathematical operation we perform on the magnitude of the measurement, we must also do to the unit of that measurement. The area of this rectangle is therefore best expressed as 197.1804 meters squared. Now just a side note here, in a subsequent video we will learn that the area of the rectangle is more correctly stated as 197 meters squared when the concept of significant figures is taken into account. So if you're unsure of the concept of significant figures as a way of quantifying the uncertainty in derived values, then be sure to watch that video. The four derived units of most relevance to introductory chemistry in this table are volume, density, molar mass, and molarity. And we're going to look at them in some detail now, starting with volume. So the volume of this cube here, which has sides of one meter in length, would be expressed as length times length times length, which is one meter times one meter times one meter. Now, when we multiply the magnitudes together, one times one times one, we get the value of one. But we also have to perform that same mathematical operation with the units. So meters times meters times meters, giving meters cubed or cubic meters as our SI unit for volume. So the volume of this cube is most correctly expressed in SI units as one meter cubed or one cubic meter. A cubic meter is actually quite a large volume and it's not often used in chemistry for quantifying volume. If we look at this cube, it has dimensions of one decimeter. A decimeter is one tenth or 0.1 of a meter, or in other words, 10 centimeters. The volume of this cube can be derived by multiplying one decimeter times one decimeter times one decimeter, which equals one decimeter cubed. And you should know that a decimeter cubed or one cubic decimeter is actually equivalent to one liter, a unit of volume that you're likely familiar with because you can easily visualize what one liter of milk looks like. Now, as I said, a decimeter is 0 0.1 meters. So 0 0.1 meters times 0 0.1 meters times 0 0.1 meters is 0 0.001 meters cubed, or 1 1,000th of a cubic meter. So a liter is actually 1 1,000th of a cubic meter, or in other words, there are 1,000 liters in one cubic meter. So you can see why we would use liters as a unit of volume in everyday chemistry, rather than the much larger SI unit of a cubic meter. Density is the next important derived unit in chemistry we'll look at, and it relates the mass of a substance to the volume that it occupies. The SI unit for mass is the kilogram, and the SI unit for volume, as we just discovered, is technically the cubic meter. The mathematical relationship for density 
is mass divided by volume, and we need to perform that same mathematical operation for the units. So the unit for density is best expressed in terms of kilograms per cubic metre. But again, in chemistry, we typically see other units being used to measure mass and volume. For example, mass is often expressed as grams and volume is often expressed as millilitres. The units for density when these quantities are used would therefore be grams per millimetre. Now a millimetre is actually equivalent in volume to one cubic centimetre. So you will also commonly see grams per cubic centimetre as a unit for density. It's also important to appreciate that the density of water is very close to one gram per cubic centimetre at room temperature and pressure. The density of wood is, on average, about half a gram per cubic centimetre. It's less dense than water, and that is one of the principal reasons why wood typically floats in water. The density for the element aluminium, which is a metal, not one of the more dense metals, but is still significantly more dense than water at 2.7 grams per cubic centimetre. And the element lead, which is one of the more dense elements from the periodic table, is 11.4 grams per cubic centimetre. Molar mass is a very important derived unit used in chemistry, and this relationship here, molar mass equals mass over moles, is probably the most important relationship in chemistry. What it actually does is relate the mass of a substance in grams to the amount of that substance in moles. And like I said in an earlier video, it's important that we do not confuse the mass of a substance with the amount of that same substance. They are related, as this relationship shows, but they are not a measure of the same physical property. Another important thing to note about this relationship is that the mass is expressed in grams and not the SI unit for mass, which is the kilogram. The relevant unit for molar mass, therefore, is derived from the mass in grams divided by the amount in moles, or in other words, grams per mole. The fourth derived quantity we deal with here is molarity, which relates the amount of a solute dissolved in a volume of solution. The amount of solute is measured in moles and the volume of solution is measured in litres. The mathematical relationship here, molarity equals moles divided by volume as measured in litres, gives us the units for molarity as moles per litre. So there we have it, four of the most important derived units used in chemistry, and we're going to be using them a lot over this video series.